Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We have an awesome lineup of schools for you to hear from tonight. Um, but before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping items. First of all, we know that you have questions and we want to make sure that we get those answered for you. So you can put your questions in the Q&A bo um, box at the bottom of your screen. I would encourage you to list your question and then also the college or university that you're directing your question to, because that will help them um, know who, who needs to respond to your question. Um, as a reminder, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are turned off and our panelists cannot see or hear you. Um, there are more sessions tonight um, or this afternoon, so feel free after this hour is up that you um, go on to hear from more institutions. They're also repeating this in April, so you can go to that same website that you signed up tonight um, for the program and um, sign up for more sessions for April. And the recording for this session, because this is being recorded, will be available within a week on that same website where you um, registered. So, Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our uh, to our panelists tonight. So first up, you're going to hear from the University of Alabama. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, Courtney. Um, my name is Amanda Sisk. I'm a regional recruiter with the University of Alabama. I actually work with all of the students from Kansas. And then we have two other recruiters, Jennifer Potts, who works with students and families from Nebraska and Heather Robinson Lauer who works with students from Oklahoma. So I'll have their contact information at the end of the presentation as well too. But we're so glad that you're here to join us today. Um, for those of you who don't know too much about the University of Alabama, location wise, we are in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Tuscaloosa is a little bit farther from home for you, but I think a big benefit, especially right now at this time of year, is some warmer weather throughout the year. Um, but we are a smaller city, definitely have that college town excitement. Hundreds of shops, restaurants, historical sites, museums, and parks to check out. Our students like to get off campus quite a bit and check out um, campus town area, downtown Tuscaloosa, um, enjoy lots of outdoor activities in the local area. Now on campus, and um, we are a larger public university, we currently have just under 38,000 students enrolled at Alabama. And I think that one of the really neat things about um, our university and our student body is kind of just where everyone comes from. Over half of our students, about 57% of our students come to us from out of state. So um, as a student at the University of Alabama, you're really gonna get to meet students from a little bit of everywhere with different interests and different backgrounds as well too. Now at Alabama, you're gonna find a really great balance between some strong academic programs and a really exciting campus life as well too. Um, we have over 200 academic programs. Um, some of the bigger programs are areas like business, biology, psychology, political science, engineering, um, but we also have some really great unique programs, things like the Accelerated Master's Program and STEM Path to the MBA, which allows students to complete their undergrad and graduate work in a shortened time period. Um, we also have a really strong honors college. We have students that will join into our honors college it's a great way to find that smaller community feel, but still be on our larger research campus. Now we wanna make sure that our students are successful both in and out of the classroom at Alabama. And we provide some really great resources to our students, including areas like advising, tutoring, career resources. This past year, we were number one in the SEC and number two in the nation for internship placement. So we really work hard to make sure that our students are prepared for that next level. Now, outside of the classroom, um, as I mentioned, you are going to find a really exciting campus life at the University of Alabama. I think it's easy to meet new people and get involved in new activities. Um, there's a lot of campus pride on Alabama's campus, even in Kansas, Nebraska, or Oklahoma, you're going to hear a roll tide every once in a while. Um, but while you're on campus, you have a lot to join in on. We have over 600 student organizations right now. We have a wonderful Greek community and we have a really large recreation program um, and then just a full calendar of events as well to you. It's really hard to get bored on our campus. A big part of campus life for our students, especially for their freshman year is also simply living on campus. And we do require our freshmen to live on campus that first year. 
Now, when it comes to admissions, um, I guess first off, we were test optional. We are test optional for our incoming 2021 students. Um, and we should have a decision on if we'll be test optional for 2022 soon as well too. Um, but we have a simple application process. Um, we wanna see your application, application fee starting with fall 2022 students will also be on the Common App. Um, we'll want to see your transcript. This year, test scores were optional. We don't require any essays or letters recommendations, so you don't need to send those in. And then um, we're on rolling admissions, but we do encourage um, students to meet our January 15th scholarship priority deadline. Now, speaking of scholarships, Alabama does have some really strong scholarships for our out-of-state students. Um, we have both our automatic merit-based scholarships, which are gonna be based on a combination of GPA and test score. And we also have national merit semifinalists and finalists, scholarship packages, national recognition packages, uh, scholarship program packages, which go above the value of tuition, as well as competitive scholarships. And those um, don't focus as much on test scores, but more so on a core GPA and a scholarship application from the student. So we have some really strong scholarships out there. Currently, when it comes to cost, cost at Alabama is um, just under 45,000. So scholarships can help quite a bit, but we do also offer financial aid and we have a December 1st priority deadline each year for financial aid. Now, I hope that you will take a chance to visit the University of Alabama, whether it be in person or virtually at this point. Um, we have both options available. Um, weekday tours are available right now. And then before you even get to campus, if you can't come to campus quite yet, we do offer um, virtual tours and information sessions, different ways to find out about the University of Alabama. Um, I look forward to working with you all. You'll see my contact information as well as Jennifer's and Heather's. Um, so we're excited to work with you as you go through your college search. Don't hesitate to reach out to us as any questions come up. So at that point, at this point, I'm gonna hand it back over to Courtney for our next presenter. Thank you all, roll tide. Thanks so much, uh, Amanda, to you and the University of Alabama. Um, those of you listening, please don't forget you can put your questions in the Q&A at any time and make sure you list your question and the college that you hope to re that responds to your question. Um, next up, you get to hear from Emporia State University. All right, hello everyone. My name is Katie Martin and I'm an admissions counselor here at ESU. And so yeah, it's Today, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about Emporia State and all the endless opportunities that we have to offer you. I also have Stephanie here with me, so she is there to answer any questions that you might have. But let me go ahead and get my presentation going and we will get started. So in case you're not as familiar with Emporia State, we are located right in between um, Topeka and Wichita. So we are right here in the state of Kansas and we are that perfect mid-sized university for you. As you can see, we have just a little under 6,000 students on our campus, which means you're going to have those really great small class sizes. Our student to professor ratio is 18 to 1. So that means an average class size here is only about 20 students. So you will definitely get to know your fellow classmates and you'll def definitely be able to connect with your professors as well. We've been doing this for a very long time now. We are over 156 years old now here at Emporia State and we originally started started out as a teacher's college. So for many, many years, all we did was prep educators. But as you can see here, we have grown a lot since then. And we now have over 200 different academic programs that our students can pursue. Um, some of our top programs today are definitely education, whether that's elementary or secondary education. We also have an amazing nursing program that offers a lot of hands-on opportunities to our students. The great thing about our nursing department, and strangely enough, it's not located on our campus. It's connected to our regional hospital here in the city of Emporia. So like I said, those students get a lot of hands-on training. They are there with the real deal at our hospital. We also have an amazing business school. We are AA CSB accredited. Only 5% of business schools across the nation hold that accreditation. So they are very good at what they do there in the business department. 
But moving on, I definitely want to talk about getting involved here on campus because, of course, you're here to get your degree, but we definitely want you to have some fun while you're doing it. We have so many different organizations that you can be a part of. Um, as far as athletics goes, we are a Division II school, and we have 15 um, different uh, sports, both men and women, um, so you can definitely stay competitive here at ESU. We also have a top-notch theater program, so if you're in to the performing arts or a very very talented performer, definitely continue that here at ESU. They not only do productions throughout the school year, but we actually have one of the toughest and a very intense summer program as well that you can be a part of. But if either of those still aren't your cup of tea, that's okay. We have over 130 different student-led organizations that you can be a part of. Everything from Greek life, so sororities and fraternities. We have different academic clubs. Clubs, um, different religious organizations, just everything under the sun. I promise that you'll find a group of people on campus that you can connect with. Let's also talk about our support services because we are not just a sink or swim institution. Um, we are here to help you be successful and we definitely want to see you graduate in those four years here at Emporia State. So some of our great services that we offer students, number one, starting with ACES. Um, it stands for Academic Center for Excellence and Success. Um, it's our free tutoring center that we have here on our campus. So if you need help with algebra, um, if you need someone to proofread your paper before you hand it in. That is a great resource for our students to really ace their classes. We also have our career services department because um, here at Emporia State we have a 96% placement rate. That means 96% of our students upon graduation um, find a job in the career that they're looking for within the first six, month, first six months of graduation. So our career services really prep our students to go out there and land those job interviews. They can help you with your cover letter, with your resume, and they even do practice interviews with students. We also have a mental health office. We also have a health clinic here on campus. So in our crazy times of COVID, we definitely wanna keep you healthy and safe. Um, and we also have a mental health office in there as well. So because your mental health is just as important as your physical health, you can meet with one of our licensed counselors at any time, which is phenomenal. I also want to talk a little bit about money. This can be a huge factor when it comes to choosing different colleges and exploring your options. And here at Emporia State, we really pride ourselves on our affordability for our students. Here at ESU, we offer flat rate tuition. So this means we do not charge you like other institutions do. You pay one flat rate fee, we do not charge you per class. So you can take anywhere from 12 to 20 credit hours and still pay the same flat rate fee. It is absolutely amazing. Emporia State is ranked number one for the lowest student debt ratio of all of the public institutions here in the state of Kansas. So if you're looking for a great education at a really great price, I mean, really look no further. Um, we still have so many different opportunities for scholarships to still cut down on those costs. We have different departmental scholarships of whatever major you're thinking about pursuing. There's funds that you can find in scholarship opportunities. We have thousands of other opportunities that we offer at ESU and also our talent awards. So if you're interested in being an athlete or play an instrument, you can definitely find those talent awards as well. So as far as our admissions requirements, we are a test optional school. So you do not have to take the ACT in order to be placed. You can, however, use it to get some awesome scholarship opportunities. But you can find more information on our website or reach out to us. We'd love to help you out. And you should definitely consider visiting our campus as well. It's the best way to see if Emporia State is going to be a good fit for you. So thank you so much for joining us on your Sunday afternoon, guys. It was really great talking with you. I'll hand it over to Courtney. Thanks so much, Katie, to you and Emporia State. Um, next up, you guys get the opportunity to hear from the University of Tulsa. There we go. Hello, everyone. Let me just get my PowerPoint set up.
Okay, perfect. My name is Isaac Arredondo. I'm one of the admission counselors in the Office of Admission. I'm super excited to have you this Sunday. Before I get started, I do want to let you know for all of you students tuning in, each one of you has your own admission counselor. And so I highly encourage you to please browse through our website where it says find my admission counselor. It's going to ask you what state you live in and your admission counselor will pop up. We're here to help you through the whole process. So please reach out to us because we really want to connect with you. So some fun facts about TU. We have over 4,000 students total on our campus. That's including our graduate school and our law school. We have students that come from 43 different states and 60 different countries. So at TU, you will definitely meet someone that lives on the other side of the world, which is something that I really, really love. Our freshman class last year was 831. And we have a faculty, a student to faculty ratio of 11 to one. Um, so an average classroom size of about 21 students per classroom. That has really benefited our institution. It's not like in the movies where there's 300 students in a huge auditorium and you don't know if you should ask a question or not. Um, your professors are there to help you. And so if you have any questions or anything like that, you can really reach out to your professors. They will know you by your name. That's something that I really love about the University of Tulsa. We do have a 94% job placement rate within six months of graduation. So our students are either getting jobs, getting accepted into graduate school and law school. And we found out this year that 90% of our pre-med students are getting accepted into the medical school of their interests across the country. So we're super, super happy and proud of the student achievements of our, and also our faculty. As you can see the beautiful golden retriever, she is Goldie. She's our canine ambassador. She is a rock star. You can literally catch her at all the major events on our campus. Um, one in particular is during finals week. She is very much present. Her and the golden retriever rescue group in Tulsa, they come and they're throughout all the buildings on campus. Um, we really wanna make sure that our students um, don't get so stressed during a very stressful time that we know that finals week is when you have to turn in finals, exams, and all of that stuff. So a little bit about student life. Um, we have eight different dining facilities on our campus. Uh, it is required to live on campus your first two years at TU. We have five different residential halls, six different apartment style complexes. Once you're a sophomore, you're eligible uh, to live in any of the apartments, two of which have their own pool. And it doesn't matter what uh, residential hall or apartment you pick, you're able to um, use the pool as long as you have your student ID. I apologize, I live by a train and every time it never fails, it always passes when I'm talking. Um, we have 17 sports that compete with the NCAA Division I. And if you're a student that's very um, involved in high school with athletics, we also have intramural sports. So if you don't necessarily wanna play at the division one level, you can always get involved and do the intramural sports and clubs, which I definitely encourage all of my students to get involved. We have over 200 plus student organizations on our campus. There's always something happening. If it's not during the day or in the night, something's happening. Um, and if you don't find any of those student organizations interesting, a group of you and your friends can make your own club and it gets funded through the university. So you're able to actually do something with your club. I had one of my students, um, she started the Asian American Student Association. So now um, she really made a difference. And so you can really make a difference on our campus. And we have all different types from Greek life, student government, um, all different types of student organizations on our campus. Now, I definitely wanna talk about some traditions at TU. Um, so running through the fountains is the week before you start your classes at TU, and it sounds kind of weird. These students kind of run through the fountains in front of one of our buildings, but it really is the start of a new beginning. Our students are, it's like you're about to start this new journey, and it really is so much fun. My favorite tradition at TU is the TU bonfire. The, it, during homecoming, there's a lot of events that happen throughout the week, but the bonfire is amazing. You can't really tell in this picture, but it's massive. You have the cheer and palm doing their thing. You have the band playing. You have the football team doing their thing. There's fireworks. Alums, student, donors, faculty, staff are very much present. Even people in the Tulsa community come just for the bonfire. They have no um, connection to TU except that we live in Tulsa and they just come just for the bonfire so it's really really awesome. We also have the freshman storm so the football team they run they invite the freshman class during our first home game and they run and storm through the field it's just really really awesome. We actually were really great our football team was really great this season so we're super super happy for them. And then we have the Kendall Bell. It's a tradition to um, ring the bell once you um, take your last exam. It's supposed to bring you good luck and all of this good um, vibes. 
Um, there is an urban legend though, if you ring it before you take your last exam that you will not graduate. So my advice to all of you students that are coming to TU, please do not ring it until you take your last exam because we wanna see you in your cap and gown and we wanna see you um, walk across that stage. Now I definitely wanna talk about student success office. So I'm your admission counselor and you'll be connected with an admission counselor. We're here to help you through the whole admission process and the scholarship process. But once you commit to TU, you will then have a student success coach and they're there to help you with any issue that you may face for the rest of your life. Yes, this is something that you will have access to even after you graduate. And these are professional individuals that are, are able to give you advice. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. If it's something about your schoolwork, or if it's something personal, your student success coach is there to help you with anything. And like I said, once you graduate, there's someone that's gonna be there to help you throughout the whole process. You also have a financial well-being advisor and a peer and alumni mentor to connect you with different alum. And then um, just to give you an idea of what our students are making, our early career salary is 58K and 104K for the mid-career salary. And again, one thing that I really love about TU is the 94% job placement rate. And so if you have any questions, please connect with us through our website, and we're here to help you through the whole process. And um, I'm going to turn it back to you, Courtney. Thanks, Isaac, to you and um, the University of Tulsa. Um, don't forget, everyone, you can put your questions in the Q&A at any time, um, even if your school hasn't presented yet. That's perfectly fine. Um, we've heard from some really great institutions so far, and I hope that you're having fun. Next up, I get the opportunity to introduce to you the University of Advancing Technology. You're on mute, Lori, I think. Oh, thank you, Courtney. And thank you everybody for being here today. I'm Lori with University of Advancing Technology. We're in Tempe, Arizona. We have less than a thousand students, only about 15 students a class. And we offer all technology degrees. When you graduate from UAT, you'll graduate with also an internship to show work experience and a student innovation project. So you'll be able to show all of your efforts that you put into your degree. So what degrees does UAT offer? We offer both Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts degrees, as well as master's degrees. What majors do we offer? Well, we have all kinds of majors in technology. And what's nice is that you can choose your favorite major and you'll have eight elective classes to take classes from other majors. So you can customize your degree through your electives. Under our digital arts degrees, we offer digital video, digital marketing, advertising art, and web design. Under our software engineering degrees, we offer advancing computer science, data science, and artificial intelligence. Our game studies degrees we offer are game design, virtual reality, game art and animation, and game programming. Business and innovation, we offer technology studies and business technology cybersecurity. There are actually more job openings today without enough people to fill them. So lots of demand with these degrees. We offer network engineering, network security, and technology forensics. Under creation and simulation, we offer robotics and embedded systems, human computer interaction, and digital maker and fabrication which is a design and manufacturing degree. UAT is accredited through the Higher Learning Commission, which is recognized by the Department of Education. Here are other universities that have the same accreditation we do. So how do you get a scholarship at UAT? Well, all you have to do is apply. You can apply as a sophomore, junior, or senior in high school. It's free to apply. There's no SAT nor ACT required. 
our average GPA has been about a 3.1, uh, but uh, we've accepted students with higher and lower than that. And actually, if you have a 3.4 or higher, you'll automatically qualify for our honors program. So what we do is we ask you five mini essay questions on your application and combine it with your GPA to determine acceptance and scholarships. So you'll find out within two weeks after you apply your acceptance status and how much of a scholarship you're eligible for. We have all kinds of clubs at UAT like eSports that competes in Overwatch and Fortnite. We have anime and manga, League of Legends, Robotics Club, Nerf Wars, as well as other clubs too. So if you love technology and you want to attend in Arizona or online, please consider University of Advancing Technology. And I put a link in the chat for you to complete for more information. Thank you for being here and I'll hand it back to Courtney. Thank you. Thanks, Lori, to you and University of Advancing Technology. Our next presentation tonight is going to be from the University of Iowa. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jess Klein, and I am one of the admission counselors at the University of Iowa. My colleague, Marissa Wietrich, is helping out with questions in the Q&A today. So for those of you that don't know much about the University of Iowa, we are a four-year public research institution located in Iowa City, which is about four hours away from Omaha, Nebraska, and about four and a half hours away from the Kansas City area. We have just over 31,000 total students on campus with an undergraduate population of about 24,000 students. Just over 50% of our students do come from the state of Iowa, but we also have over 40% of our students coming from other states in the US as well as internationally. Last year's incoming first year class, as you can see off to the right of your screen, um, was our highest academically achieving class we've ever accepted to the University of Iowa with an average high school GPA of a 3.78 on a 4.0 scale, and they were sitting about the middle 50% for the ACT and SAT. However, I do want to impress that this is not our admission criteria. This is simply the averages of our most recent freshman class. Taking a look at our application process, if you are considering becoming a Hawkeye, we do recommend applying early in your senior year. We do start making admission decisions around September 1, and we make those admission decisions on a rolling basis. You can find our application on our website, uiowa.edu through the Common App or through the Coalition App, and it does cost $40 to apply. We do accept applications through May 1 of your senior year. However, I do recommend applying prior to March 1st, so you are still eligible for scholarship consideration. Our admission criteria is set by the State Board of Regents, so we utilize a formula called the Regent Admission Index or the RAI formula, which you should see on your screen currently. Part of the RAI formula is your ACT or SAT score, which I will talk more about in just a moment, but we also take into consideration your high school cumulative GPA and the number of years of high school core courses that you have completed. As a non-resident student, we are looking for a 255 or higher in order to be admitted to our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. For the fall of 2021 and the fall of 2022, we are test optional. So if you do not have a test score, you can still be considered for admission. We will take into consideration the other two factors of this formula, your GPA and high school core courses, and we'll reach out for a transcript and a personal statement in order to make a holistic admission decision. Moving on here to some of the next parts of the admission process. If you are interested in one of our programs in medicine, business, education, or engineering, these programs do offer direct admission as well as standard admission processes. So when you apply to the University of Iowa, in many cases, you will automatically be considered for direct admission to your program, but you may have to submit some supplemental information for some of these programs. If you do not obtain direct admission, standard 
admission is a route you can take as well, which will allow you to apply as a current University of Iowa student. In addition to the areas of study listed on the previous slide, we offer over 200 areas of study, including majors, minors, and certificates on our campus. Students enjoy a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. So with this, you are offered the opportunity to get to know your professors and your peers as well, as many of our courses, about 80% are less than 30 students. Only about 4% of our courses campus wide have more than 100 students in the class. This allows you, again, not only to get to know your faculty, but you also have opportunities to take advantage of academic resources to help you succeed in all of your courses. You will have opportunities to conduct research in any of our areas of study with faculty members. You'll have access to one of the largest and best teaching hospitals in the nation, as well as other hands-on experiential learning opportunities and the University of Iowa Honors Program. Some of our best or well-known programs on campus or well-ranked programs are our writing program. We do have the number one writing program in the nation, and we are well-ranked in business, engineering, and education, and we are very well known as a health sciences institution. Outside of the classroom, you have the opportunity to participate in over 500 student organizations, everything from Greek life to academic organizations, religious organizations, political organizations, and those that involve uh, philanthropy in the community as well. If you are at all interested in the performing arts world, you have over 400 opportunities every single academic year to be center stage for the first time or to try something new or to continue something that you did in high school and stay involved in the fine arts. We also offer the opportunity to get involved in intramural sports, in club sports, or to attend a Big Ten sporting event. We are a Division I school in the Big Ten, and so students have the opportunity to attend all of our Big Ten sporting events on campus. Finally, we are located in Iowa City, which is the best college town in the nation currently, and we are located right across the street from the downtown business district. This allows students an opportunity to take a uh, step off campus for a few moments, take advantage of some of the businesses and restaurants downtown, and also get involved in the community as well. If you are interested in learning more about the University of Iowa, I do encourage you to visit our website, take advantage of our virtual visit options, or reach out. And I'm going to have Marissa put my contact information as well as hers and another of our colleagues in the chat feature so you can reach out to us. Thank you for your interest in the University of Iowa. And as always, go Hawks! Thanks, Jess, to you and the University of Iowa. And since our friends from Northeastern University were not able to join us tonight, the University of Iowa was, was our final presentation. However, I would like to invite our panelists to turn on back on their cameras and give some great expert advice to um, those families and students that are listening. So we'll go round robin in the order that you um, presented. So University of Alabama up first. What advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? Um, other than just some general organizational advice on staying organized, um, I think, you know, right now, especially this year, um, a lot of colleges and universities have really beefed up their virtual options online and opportunities. So um, for those of you who, you know, you've taken advantage of this presentation today, which is a great, you know, first step for you in your college search, definitely make sure to visit our websites as well too. Um, if you can't travel yet or aren't comfortable traveling yet, um, a lot of us have really started doing many more information sessions and tours and things online that we haven't done in the past. So definitely be taking advantage of those. All right, I bet I'm next. So yeah, just to kind of reiterate what Amanda said. Yeah, that was really great advice. Really do your own research and figure out what college is going to be the best fit for you. Kind of think about in high school and see if you can, can definitely visiting campus is a great opportunity. You can really get a feel for campus and the campus culture that we have. So yeah, definitely check out all the colleges that you're interested in. Go and visit their campus and always reach out to anyone if you ever have any questions. That's our entire job as admissions, admissions counselors is to help you. So don't be shy and reach out. I second that. That was basically what I was going to say, too, is connect with your admission counselor. That's what 
our job is to help you through the whole process through the financial aid packets. Um, every institution and every admission counselor does certain things differently, but we're all there to help you connect and kind of really get the whole big picture of our institution. And the second thing I would add is actually visit. I know with the pandemic, it can be, um, you know, I would just say either do it virtually or do it in person, but connect and visit the university or institution that you're interested in. I, um, I agree with what everybody said, and I also think that it's important to look for outside scholarships early. Uh, start researching all of the websites that offer them and apply to as many as possible. And I would second everything that has been said so far as well. I do also kind of recommend that students get connected, but not just get connected, get connected as early as you can so that someone at your chosen institution, an admission professional, for example, like myself, can help make sure you are meeting all of the important deadlines. I also tell students that I work with that college is a big choice and we can really help you figure out what exactly you are looking for in an institution and help you determine if the school is a good fit for you. So getting connected with somebody can be very beneficial. Awesome. Thank you. So we still have a couple more minutes. So I'd like um, to do a round robin again. And um, you have a choice of either telling the audience a fun fact about your institution or a, one of your fun campus traditions. And we'll start with Amanda again. Okay, I'll do a campus tradition. Um, one of my favorite campus traditions at Alabama is called the Walk of Champions. It happens, it's a game day tradition. It happens two hours prior to football games, our home games, and um, fans can basically line um, the sidewalk up to the stadium and our buses of football players and coaches will arrive and kind of walk through the line of people. So you get to cheer them on and it's just a really fun, exciting, um, you know, way to kind of kick off the football games at home. Yeah, and one of my favorite traditions here at Emporia State is definitely our welcome back party for all of our incoming and returning students each year. Granted with COVID, things are a little different, but it's super exciting to welcome our new incoming class, not only to campus, but to the community as well. We have a huge block party. They shut down downtown and have live music and food trucks, and it's just a really great way to connect in your new little hometown. Since I already talked about some of our traditions in my presentation, I'm going to say a fun fact. So Goldie, she's the canine ambassador that I was, that I mentioned. She, so it's kind of a pet peeve. It's a fun fact for me as well, is if you have any food around you, she will completely ignore you until you give her that food. So that's my only like pet peeve of Goldie. I love her, but that's the fun fact. If you have any food around you, she will completely just won't leave you alone until you give her a piece of whatever you have. Isaac, she's no dummy. <laughs> she, yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> so we have our UAT Student Innovation Project Showcase at the end of every semester and it demonstrates the students hard work and innovative ideas that they present to the whole campus. We have a number of traditions at the University of Iowa, but by far, I think my favorite and as well as many others favorites is called the wave. So our football stadium is actually located directly next to our University of Iowa hospitals and clinics and specifically our Stead Family Children's Hospital, which is tall enough that it overlooks the stadium. So on game days, children that are in the children's hospital fighting pediatric cancer or are there for any sort of treatment or surgeries are able to go up to one of the top floors and look down into the stadium to watch the game. So we started a tradition where at the end of every first quarter, the entire stadium, which is about 70,000 people, will turn and wave up at the children in the children's hospital. And then anybody that is up there can turn and wave back at those that are in the stadium. 
and it has definitely taken off. We have done this the past few years, and even with COVID and not really having that many people in the stadium, people will still pop by on Saturdays and wave up at the children at the children's hospital just from the street level. So very heartwarming and something we are very proud of. Thanks um, to all of our panelists for that great information. Um, at audience, I would like you to take a look at these professionals' faces, smiling faces on the screen. Um, many of them mentioned it, but um, they are really to, here to help you. And so don't hesitate to reach out to them, call them, email them. They're here to help. Um, make sure that you get the information from the experts, which are these folks here on the screen, versus from a friend's brother's friend. Um, it's always better to get it from the experts. So with that, I would like to say thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, as you close out, will be a quick four question survey so that we hope that you'll provide us with some feedback sign up for more sessions there's still two hours more of these this afternoon and then there'll be more in april um, the recording of this session along with other sessions that are happening today will be available for playback uh, within one week at that same website where you um, registered so um, have a great afternoon everyone and we'll see you soon good luck <laughs>